I have one. So ever since coming to America, I've heard many people make the argument that they cannot trust both political parties. And because of that, they vote for candidates that best aligns with their values. And I get that way of thinking. But when I came here, it didn't take very long for me to realize that I could never vote Democrat. And it's because I discovered what I believe is a fundamental difference between the two ideologies. Democrats in general judge success based on their intentions. On the other hand, conservatives judge success based on results. Here's what I mean. So for a Democrat, ending homelessness may sound good and may be a noble goal. However, when they implement policies to try to curb homelessness and those policies fail, they never look back and say, maybe we should do something different. They always pat themselves on the back and say, at least we were trying to do something. On the other hand, Republicans will say, in order for us to do something, we have to have evidence that it's going to work. And if we cannot provide evidence that it's going to work, then we're not going to invest in that thing. And because of that, Republicans always sound like they're stopping progress. And Democrats can call themselves progressives because they want to move forward with items that are unproven, even if those items end up failing. And if you think I'm mistaken, just take a listen. You have, however, said you would favor an increase in the capital gains tax. As a matter of fact, you said on CNBC, and I quote, I certainly would not go above what existed under Bill Clinton, which was 28%. It's now 15%. That's almost a doubling if you went to 28%. But actually, Bill Clinton in 1997 signed legislation that dropped the capital gains tax to 20%. Right. And George Bush has taken it down to 15%. Right. And in each instance, when the rate dropped, revenues from the tax increased. The government took in more money. And in the 1980s, when the tax was increased to 28%, the revenues went down. So why raise it at all, especially given the fact that 100 million people in this country own stock and would be affected? Well, Charlie, what I've said is that I would look at raising the capital gains tax for purposes of fairness. Part of what has happened uh, is that those who are able to work the stock market and amass huge fortunes on capital gains are paying a lower tax rate than their secretaries. That's not fair. Uh, and what I want is, is not oppressive taxation. Uh, I want businesses to thrive and I want uh, people to be rewarded for their success. But what I also want to make sure is that our tax system is fair. All right, so this was a perfect case in point for what I was trying to illustrate. Obama was given clear evidence that raising the capital gains tax will invariably lead to the government getting less revenue and lowering that tax always led to more revenue for the government. And yet, his response to wanting to raise the capital gains tax was that it had to do with fairness. So he was willing to pursue a policy that was proven to not work because he felt he had noble intentions to create what he believed was fairness. He was willing to deprive the government of sorely needed funds that could have been used to help the same poor people that he claimed to care about. He was willing to forego those funds in pursuit of a misguided goal of achieving fairness. Now, I know Republicans have their own issues. However, this is one of the primary reasons why I could never vote Democrat. Now, there are so many other reasons why I couldn't, but this is one.